Well, I'm so excited for this morning. I'm so excited for you. Um, we're going to hear from Daniel Napier. Uh, this last May, uh, I was at the Life in God conference at the GLC that the um, Martin Institute was putting on, and I was like a C minus level speaker. And you know, I spoke in like one room, four friends, and my mother showed up. Uh, but one of the A level speakers uh, was Daniel. And he talked about basically a consideration of Jesus' practical wisdom or the philosophy of Jesus. And I was just captivated by his take on it. It was true, it was fascinating, and I found him uh, delightful. Uh, let me tell you about the mind of Daniel. He, I can't even pronounce the name of the university that he went to in Amsterdam. Uh, he's been an adjunct professor, formerly the associate professor of theology at Austin Graduate School of Theology. Also a preaching minister for the Holland Street Church of Christ in San Marcos, that's in Texas. Prior to joining the faculty, Daniel served in Greece, Bulgaria, and Croatia, and he is headed back to Greece uh, very soon after this stint here at Westmont. In tandem with his ministerial calling, Daniel's pursued advanced degrees in biblical studies, theology, the history of philosophy. Uh, he has a terrific mind. Daniel also has a, a great heart uh, for the kingdom, for his wife, Carly, and their two children, 18 and 12 years old, and they're all going together on this adventure to Greece. But now let's talk about his body. He's engaged in a number of strength sports over the years, Highland Games, powerlifting, and strongman. Today he regularly trains and competes in Olympic-style weightlifting. For the past two years, he has won the Texas State Championship. They have strong people there, people. In the 105 kilogram Masters Division. Little side note, I have been certified as an Olympic style weightlifting coach for years and years. I hold no records. Daniel has set six Texas State records. Daniel is buff, he's biblical, and he's philosophical. Let's give him a warm Westmont welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Um, well, grace and peace to you. Um, I had expected to be embarrassed, but not quite in that way. So, uh, just for the record, uh, when you set records in the master's class, that makes you officially strong uh, for an old guy. So, you got to put it in perspective. Um, I want to talk with you a little bit this morning about life building in Jesus' way. And uh, when I say life building, I'm not, I'm not talking about the kind of choices that you make when you say, you know, what am I going to major in? Uh, what, what career should I pursue? I, what I'm talking about is deeper than that. I, I want to talk to you about what kind of person you're going to become. And... Um, what kind of effect that'll have in terms of shaping the lives of others around you just because of, um, of the character that has developed within you. And give you a little, let me just say what my approach is as I read Jesus and I consider Sermon on the Mount and the rest of his teachings. Um, when, we, when we turn to Jesus, what we're doing is we're hearing really the most intelligent person who's lived uh, illuminate the most fundamental elements of human life. And so as you read through the Sermon on the Mount, for instance, you'll see him dealing with uh, such things that, um, that we all go through as um, how to deal with anger and that building frustration inside. Um, what to do with sexual desire and when you have a spouse with, with dissatisfaction with that spouse. Um, how to deal with, with persons who just don't like you and maybe you're actively hostile. Uh, anybody here just can't relate with any one of those? Um, that's, these are things that everybody has to go through. There's not a human life that doesn't include these sorts of elements. And what Jesus does is w within this, this overarching reality this, um, of, of God at work in the world, and his language for that is just the kingdom of God. Right? Within the kingdom of God, he illuminates um, each of those elements of life and shows us a way forward. And so that's how I read Jesus. I want to 
encourage you to, to give it a shot, see if you don't find uh, that uh, we have here um, a person just speaking of reality in a way that uh, makes human life possible. And I, I find him personally, um, having compared him with many people who have uh, who thought deeply over the ages, I find him to be the unrivaled master of human existence. He just, he understands human beings, what makes us tick, um, the depths into which we can fall and how to extract us from those depths like nobody else, like nobody else. And so today I want to uh, spend a little bit of time with you on the, the way that Jesus concludes the largest block of teaching um, that we have of his at the end of Matthew 7. And so, um, hear these words. Hear these words from Matthew 7, 24 and following. And listen for these life truths that he offers that really provide kind of a conceptual frame for how a, we can receive his insights and employ the practices that he passes on to us. He says this, so, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man, a wise person, who built his house upon the rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and burst against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded upon the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a foolish person who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it burst against that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Um, as I look at this, what I see is Jesus providing um, four life truths that kind of give angles to a frame within which we can approach life and approach his teachings. And uh, the, those four angles, or if you want to change the metaphor, the four pillars on which uh, we can approach life um, are, are these understandings. Um, we'll unpack each of them. First of all, he gives us the appropriate categories within which uh, to, to approach our day-to-day -day life decisions, um, the choices before us. And the, the category is is wisdom versus foolishness. We'll go through each of these. Um, the second, he, he introduces what I'm just going to call the law of progression. Um, third, uh, he, he lets us see the way in which foundations just aren't optional in human life. Uh, you can choose which foundation, but not whether or not to have one. And then he lets us know that there's a reality test coming. Okay, so those are the four pillars or four angles. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the categories that we use as we evaluate life choices. Uh, it makes a great difference um, which ones you use, actually. And what Jesus offers here is um, he, he encourages us to approach the decisions of life as, as we develop who we're going to be in terms of um, the most elemental categories, and those categories are practical wisdom versus foolishness. Um, there's different words that are used in the New Testament for wisdom. Uh, in, in ancient Greek, you have different uh, forms, and this is the one that has to do with practical decision making. Okay? Uh, in other words, when you ask the question, um, is this possible or just completely you know, beyond what could happen, um, you're asking a question of practical wisdom. Um, it's this aspect of a person that engages when you decide um, if it's worthwhile or if it's a waste of time. Right? Uh, if it's a, uh, you know, an endeavor that has a future or if uh, it's just a lost cause, um, that's practical wisdom. Um, that you're calling upon at that point. And what Jesus does here is he offers us wisdom. That's the category he chooses. And, that, and he encourages us to use this as we make those everyday decisions. And, and the beauty of that is this. Um, unlike many of the 
of the categories that we tend to use as we evaluate our choices and the choices of others, um, practical wisdom and foolishness apply to everything. Okay. Um, I've noticed, maybe you have too, that some of Jesus' followers um, are fond of moving very quickly to kind of extreme hyperbolic judgments. And they want to evaluate everything in themselves and in other people, sometimes especially in other people. <laughs> but um, they want to judge everything in terms of good versus evil, of righteousness versus wickedness. And the problem with that is simply that the vast majority of life kind of falls through the gaps. Um, the, the truth is that most of the decisions we make day by day uh, are not susceptible to being either um, thoroughgoingly good or all the way evil. We, um, and, and most persons uh, are neither of those extremes in terms of character. They're, they're neither um, thoroughly good or all the way wicked. And the fact of the matter is uh, we're, not, we're not consistent enough right, um, to, to be uh, really good or really wicked most of the time. Most of us, we fall in between. Um, and you see, those, uh, those evaluations are more like destinations at the end of a very, very long journey, a life journey. And it's rare for there to be occasions where an act would be just utterly wicked, okay? It does happen, but typically what, what's happening there is that's the end of a long path. And, and here's the thing, um, those end destinations, we get to them through thousands upon thousands of forks in the road. And it's, it's those micro decisions of life, those everyday decisions that are composed of practical wisdom or foolishness that lead over a long period of time in a trajectory to goodness or evil, to righteousness or wickedness. Okay? And so what, what Jesus does is he calls us to kind of dial back and look at the details of life as we live it in terms of practical wisdom um, or foolishness. And, and here's the thing, because he's introduced us to the kingdom of God, because we know, uh, remember, kingdom of God is what God's doing. It's him at work here to transform things, and we're invited to enter into what he's doing, um, to enter into the kingdom. Within that context of God at work in this world, right where you're at, um, you can rethink what's a practical choice. Um, there's things that perhaps we once thought impossible that are just completely doable when God's at work in the world and we're joining with them. And, and there's things that perhaps we once thought were worth chasing, pursuing, that within this larger picture of God at work and knowing um, some of his project uh, that we can join into, we now see that's just a, a complete waste of time. Right? And so he offers these categories for us to approach life with, um, to approach it in terms of wisdom. Um, now, as we set ourselves to make these decisions, you know, to, these micro decisions day by day, and to keep practical wisdom in front of us within the kingdom, um, he adds this second pillar or angle to the frame. And I'm just going to call it the law of progression. The law of progression. Um, here's what I mean by that. Uh, you'll notice that in this account, everybody is building. Everybody's building. It's not that the wise person builds and the foolish person doesn't. Everybody's building because this is just a feature of human existence, of human life, that whatever it is that you're doing, uh, whatever acts you repeat, it becomes easier for you to repeat again. Okay? You're getting better at whatever it is that you're doing, for good or for ill, right? in wisdom or in foolishness, you are going deeper into some way of life. And that's true if what you spend your time doing is sitting on the couch, eating potato chips, playing video games, right? You're, 
you're adapting even the very fibers of your body, right? um, the connections of your synapses are becoming more adapted to that. And so you are adapting, you are progressing in some way of life. Um, there's not an option not to. And so in light of that, what Jesus says is, uh, attend to what it is you're building. Um, what you're adapting to. Um, because it turns out that hearing Jesus and not practicing what he says is just as much a way of building. It's just a way of building that leads to disaster. Okay? And so be mindful that whatever you're doing is shaping who you'll become because over time where those repeated actions become habits and those habits develop into settled character and that character produces a life. Um, so there's a law of progression that we have to take into account as we live. And part of progressing well then, and this is the third, third pillar, third angle on the frame, is to recognize that in human life, foundations just aren't optional. Um, they're, they're inevitable. Okay? Um, you can choose what the foundation will be, but not whether or not you'll have one. It's just, um, it's a feature of human life, of human existence, that we require, that human beings require some base outside of themselves in order to live. And, and the reason's simple. Um, it's, the reason is that life is just too vast and uh, the knowledge base needed um, to conduct life is too extensive for any one person or community or generation to master it all. Okay? Now, you're, you're beginning to, to realize that as you go into fields and you're just like, oh my goodness, there's so much. I didn't know you know, how deep it went. Um, but, you know, I, don't, I hope this isn't discouraging. It doesn't end. <laughs> when, when you get out there and you, you start studying, the deeper in you find that there's still more and more and more, and no matter how intelligent a person is, you just can't, you can't start from scratch on your own. Okay? We all will build our lives on things that are received from others. It's just a feature of human existence. And so, um, the question that we want to ask ourselves, that Jesus asks us to consider, is this. Um, how deep, how solid is the way of life that you're receiving? Because okay. here's the thing about foundations. Um, it all depends on what you want to build on top. Right? And you only have to dig as deep as you want to be able to build high. And you only need as solid a foundation as you to match the, how long you want that structure to endure. Okay? So, uh, you know, pitching a tent on sand is an act of perfect wisdom because you're picking it up the next day. Right? There's no foolishness involved in that. Um, but if you want heights of character that will become a blessing to those that you interact with day by day, um, then you better, you better dig deep in that foundation. And since you're going to exist forever, okay. since as a person, yes, your body will die, but you won't cease, um, you're going to want to found your life on the rock that just never goes away. Right? Anything else, anything else uh, is a move in the direction of disaster. And so, uh, Foundations aren't optional. Um, we've got to have them, but we can examine which one we're going to build on. And we want to ask how sure, how solid, how deep we're going with them. Fourth pillar, fourth angle, 
is that whatever foundation you choose, whatever life you're progressing and building upon, um, has to eventually stand against the reality test. Um, there is a storm coming. There's always a storm coming. There's always a storm. And so sooner and later, sooner or later, uh, we're going to bump into reality. And the funny thing about it is um, you bump into it whether you believe in it or not. Okay? Uh, and reality doesn't adapt itself. It doesn't change to shoot to suit our fashions, our preferences. Um, it, it's not going to alter itself because of, you know, um, really great self-esteem <laughs> or because of, of some um, delusion or special, um, you know, status in life. Um, things don't change because of that. Um, things have natures. And... In given conditions, they will respond in keeping with those natures. And so, uh, sand shifts, and uh, rock uh, is stable, it stands, and human persons have natures as well. We, uh, we can change, no doubt, but we can only change at a certain pace. Right? without becoming completely disoriented and, and kind of breaking down. And that's why in the section just before this, in the Sermon on the Mount, he, he talks about um, becoming the sort of, of tree, <laughs> the sort of person who on the inside has, through these decisions and through discipline, moved towards goodness, so that that's what just kind of automatically comes out in whatever situation you find yourself in. So you can count, it's part of human nature, it's part of reality, that's what, what, what is on the inside will eventually come out. It will. And it's because of that that uh, we have to go about life building and foundation choosing with the awareness that there's always a storm coming. There's always um, a test on the way. And, and here's the thing about those tests. Um, they are not unique to any one life path. And you, you'll notice in this, it's not that the, the storm comes and it hits the foolish person and the wise person gets to sail on without it. You see, um, the... The difficulties, the vicissitudes of life don't just happen to one type of person or another. They're the sort of thing that we all have to go through. Everybody in this life, whether wise or foolish, are going to have to face moments of deep tragedy, are going to um, go through the pressures of, of incredible challenge and overwhelming odds at times. Everybody gets those phone calls where... Um, you hear the news that you just never imagined you would hear. Whether or not a storm is coming is, is, is not for one path or another. It comes to all. But the path that you've chosen, the foundation you've selected, the life you've progressed in, make all the difference in the world when those moments come, when the storm arrives. And so... Jesus lets us know that that's coming. And that's why, as you read through his teachings, you find him always preparing us for the reality test. Um, he teaches us to pray. And among the things he teaches us to pray is, um, don't see where we'll break, Lord. <laughs> right? Don't lead us into testing, but deliver us from evil. Keep bad things from happening to us. Right? And that's a, that is a prayer of wisdom. Just to know that we all have breaking points and to ask God's help in not reaching those. Okay? But we don't just ask that that not happen. We also, from Jesus' teaching, are taught how to, how to prepare through taking on practices that he has um, bequeathed to us. 
And so he teaches us right here in the Sermon on the Mount how to do things like engage in service when nobody's looking, give without drawing attention, how to pray in secret, um, how to walk extra miles, and um, how to let go of anger when nobody would have blamed us for holding a grudge. Right? And, and it's those practices that that deal with the micro decisions of everyday life. It's those acts of practical wisdom that long term uh, make all the difference in the world. Um, they're largely invisible in a human life, like a foundation is. Uh, you notice once the building's up, you don't see what's supporting it. But that doesn't make what's supporting it any less important. It's those invisible things that, that we do um, that nobody else notices that make all the difference when the storm arrives. Okay. And so Jesus says, keep this in mind as you, as you make those decisions of practical wisdom day by day, uh, as you go about um, progressing down the path that you're following, as you test the foundations, keep in mind that there's a storm coming. There's always a storm coming. But, and this is important, within the kingdom of God, as you practice Jesus' way, uh, when the storm arrives, it just isn't that big a deal. Okay? Storms are not that big a deal um, if you're rooted if you're rooted in Jesus' way, if you're founded upon the rock. Um, will you bow with me? Um, Lord Jesus, we thank you for illuminating life. And we come to you um, confessing that we need wisdom and believing that, um, that you provide that the, the Father of lights will give freely to those who ask. And so we ask for your wisdom to infuse our life. We ask that you would enable us to make those decisions day by day um, that lead us deeper, further up and deeper in um, to your project, your kingdom. I ask for your blessing over each person here and that you would infuse our lives um, with your power. And we ask this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen.